I'm a wine journalist, I'm a speaker, and I'm the founder of Black Wine Professionals. Julia Coney is a Washington, D.C.-based wine writer, educator, and consultant. Originally from Houston, Texas, Julia spent the first 20 years of her career as a legal assistant before finding her passion in wine and travel. She earned her WSET Level 2 certification in wine and spirits and has since dedicated her career to making wine approachable for everyone. I first met Julia back in 2018 when I was in college working part-time in a wine shop. When I first started, I only knew about wine that came from a box, but Julia was incredibly encouraging and took the time to show me that every glass has a story. Julia draws people to the tasting table with her contagious enthusiasm for finding and sharing great wines. She is centered around the idea that wine should be communal and inclusive, as her latest endeavor shows. This spring, Julia founded Black Wine Professionals, a resource for wine industry employers and professionals with the goal of lifting up the many multifaceted Black professionals in the world of wine. On our first episode of Yuptown, we'll learn more about Julia's mission and dive into her career transition from the world of law to the world of wine. Plus, she'll share her advice on navigating company happy hours, as well as tell us what pairs well with Chipotle. I'm Victoria Principato, and this is Yuptown. Um, I'm so excited to have you on, and I, I think a, a good place to start, obviously, would be, you know, just a little bit about your background um, and maybe what you went to school for and where you started out in your career. Oh, uh, so crazy. So I am from the South. I'm from Houston, Texas. And I always say, like, I'm from, I live in D.C., but I also live between Houston because, like, half my crap is still, like, <laughs> in Houston for so long. Yeah. Um, I went to UT and then also the University of Houston. I have a degree in English literature with a minor in psychology and French. Wow. <laughs> so. You were busy. <laughs> I, was, I was busy. I was one of those kids that actually wanted to get through college. I, yeah. I had a lot of freedom in high school, being the baby of four older brothers, and I was given a lot of leeway. So by the time I got to college, I was like, oh, this is what people are doing. This is boring. Let me like work my butt off and get out. <laughs> and I thought I was going to be a lawyer, right? I like to talk and I like to yeah. argue. With <laughs> I like to read. I was like, this is great. I'm going to go to law school. And wow. my parents were like, you should go work at a law firm. And I said, okay. And I got my first job at a law firm at 22, 23. Yeah. So was that right out of school? Yeah. Th well, I went through like a hospital legal wow. department and then I went to a law firm. Like mm -hmm. I wanted, I just was like, that was the first job and it was paying, you know, very well for the time. And that was the nineties, right? Um, yeah. People don't know, I am 47, so I'm very happy. You to could have fooled me. You look amazing. I will be 48 in December. So I'm okay saying my age. I have no problem with that. But yeah. I still thought I was going to go to, you know, hospital was different because people had left corporate, but it took me going to literally big law. And I mm. worked at a small law firm and then I went to a big law firm. And, and what was your role there? You were a legal I assistant? walked in as a legal assistant, a legal secretary. Like wow. I could type super, super fast and I was just quick. And like the first day they were like, oh, we'll have you as a temp. And that was a Monday. By mm -hmm. Friday, I had a full time position offer. That's amazing. But I'm not surprised at all. Like, like, you are just so focused. I went from there assistant. to being a legal assistant. Like, yeah. all, like within a year. Like wow. within a year because the attorneys were like, yeah, that's great. But can you like move over here and do this? And that's really where I started getting interested in wine, even though I studied abroad in France. Mm. More of oh. wine was cheaper than soda, right? <laughs> So you could get, and this is when there was a franc, it wasn't the euro. So I want you to like really go back. Yeah. You could get an omelet with a salad and a glass of wine for six francs, which at that time was literally $6. It was That's just six unheard francs. of. Unheard of, right? And if you wanted steak with fries, that was eight. But you had to get wine because otherwise you have to up past 10. Wow. Okay. So that, that was when you studied abroad in, in Paris. Oh my gosh. So was this after college or was this during college? During and then after. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. So that's, I mean, I'm sure you, yeah, 
easy to get interested in wine in Paris, right? But I didn't get interested. It was just like everybody just drank wine. It was mm. everywhere. And coming from a place where wine wasn't on my household table, like my family doesn't drink, it was yeah. kind of fascinating that dinner was two hours. You know, it was one of those things like dinners are long. So yeah. nobody was getting drunk. Mm. <laughs> it was it's just the experience. Yeah. We have wine with dinner. Yeah. And it was long. Like that was more of like, and ever, all the students got together. And I mean, you know, you could buy a bottle of wine for a dollar fifty. Yeah, bottle of wine. Good over there. I thought, what are they doing in New York? $1.50. Like, you're just like, it's cheaper <laughs> to buy wine. Than, it was cheaper to buy wine than water. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> right. Oh, man, that was a fun time. I still keep up with people who I went to cl uh, class with. That's amazing. But it wasn't, you know, and then I came back and I worked in, it wasn't until an attorney I worked with in his, he had just come back from California, Napa. And this was a few years later. And I was like, why is all this wine in front of my desk? I can't move. You can't find anything. I can't get out because all this wine is here. And he's like, I want to take it home. And he was like, but you studied in France. I was like, yeah, but it's just wine. Was And then he was like, I'm having a barbecue. Can you come to my house? Have this barbecue. Wow. And this wine with me. And oh my gosh. And he did a pairing meal with Texas wow. barbecue and all this like Napa Valley Cabernets. And I was like, what? It was like, yeah. is that when it clicked for you that this like, was it, it something that you could wine pursue? And together? Yes. Yeah. In, in America, in a way that it had clicked in France, like, okay, you go. And it was just one of those, he was super nice about it. And so then it this sounds like that thing. kind of brought it to your sphere and your world, you know, like yeah. obviously when you're studying abroad, it's a new experience. It's an immersive experience, but when you're kind of having it presented to you in a way that's like, Oh, this is familiar, but also I'm learning something new. That's yeah. And he told me like every week I would go to the little wine store, do a tasting, just like we would do at the store in DC. Yeah. And I just, just started writing notes, making like what wow. I like, I didn't like, because I'm just very curious and, you know, single discretionary income mm -hmm. traveling, you know, and I was just like, I want to go to Bordeaux. And he was like, I'll help you go to Bordeaux. That's amazing. Wow. So he, and then so he, he sounds like he was your first mentor kind of in He was my field. first mentor. He planned uh -huh. my first trip to Napa. Wow. At 26. He planned my first trip to Bordeaux at 27. Like, and this is not like now where you can go and get a hotel. This is like wire transfer of money. This yeah. is only collect <laughs> to get a hotel reservation and using a like travel agent who knew like I was traveling by myself and how do I get mm. there and you know, how do I pack, you know, just things, things. And so for me, it was just curiosity and I wanted to travel and the wine kind of was always in the periphery. Like, right. Oh, okay. Is, everywhere it's every vacation I go to I'm looking at where are we going to eat and where are we going to drink right well of course the most important part <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, yeah we're going to see this but then where are we going to eat and where are we going to drink of course yeah so I mean that's obviously an interest of yours and it's not a hard interest to have I would say just because it's, it's obviously you know ex exciting and fun how did you kind of come to the idea um that you could kind of shift this into your professional career and like how did you start writing about wine how did you become certified so i left houston and moved to dc in 2005 mm -hmm. not knowing one single person i was like well i live in dc wow i went to new york and i was like mm, these are little apartments i do not like this <laughs> <laughs> and it was the, the, the real at that time told me like you should go to dc because mm -hmm. New York. I came to DC with the law firm, transferred, and I really, really started traveling because I worked in uh, IT. Oh, okay. And one of the things we did was we were like, I worked on the very first iPhone. I worked in technology, so I was always traveling. Like, I spent mm -hmm. time in Asia, just, just going, going, going. And then I was like, oh, I want to do something else, kind of like as a hobby because I was just working so much. Wow. And then in 2006, my oldest brother passed away in Houston. Mm. And I came back and my coworker was like, you said you wanted to outlet and you always like to write and you love to read. There's this workshop going on at Howard University with all these magazines. And I said, oh, okay. So I go and one lady who was a beauty editor for mm -hmm. Elle and Lucky, she goes, what do you do for your skin? It's like really, really pretty. And I was like, oh, I fly to France every year and get a facial. And she went, <laughs> No, like, no, seriously. And I was like, no, I go to <laughs> get a facial and I buy all my beauty products. I would expect nothing less. That's so no, you, you should start a beauty blog. Oh, wow. And That's I, where you started. And I wouldn't, I don't want to start a blog because in my mind, a blog was like, just, I didn't, I didn't think I had control because I didn't know, right. really understand it. Right. And she technically kind of walked me through it. 
and I started a beauty blog in two, March of 2006. So I've been blogging since March of 2006. Right. And that's kind of a certain muscle you have to like really train, you know, to have that discipline. I was waking up at four in the morning blogging before I went to work. Wow. Oh I'm my God. So excited to talk about all these beauty products. And I remember probably nine months later, a beauty brand reached out to me and said, can we send you some products? And I thought it was a hoax. Cause I was like, <laughs> they're not, they're not legit. This is not legit. It's, it's Estee Lauder. They don't want to send me anything. And they came <laughs> to my job and I opened it up and it was a box of beauty products. And I was like, Oh, this is a thing. Oh, that's incredible. And then a year later, I went to Fashion Week. And then in 2008, my blog got picked up by Women's Wear Daily as being one of the top 10 beauty blogs on the internet. Right. Really? That's amazing. Week. So it just kind of blew up. Washington Post, Washingtonian, yeah. full spreads. Like it became kind of nuts. So I, I did that for four years with the day job from wow. 2000 to 2010. And then in 2010, I decided to go freelance, being a full-time beauty and travel writer. Wow. Okay. So it started out, it, I guess your, your path kind of started, you started out building a certain muscle, you know, just with blogging, writing, and then the subject matter is, is when it started to shift. So that's interesting. And I wrote that blog. It's called, uh, I still have every blog post saved on a drive. It was called right. All About the Pretty. Wow. And I did that for 10 years. And wow. in the end of 2005, 2015, mm -hmm. I was like, I really want to write about food and wine. And my mom was here at the time visiting. And she was like, yeah, you really should. But are you going to do food or wine? And I kind of like did the same thing I did with mm -hmm. beauty. I was like, let me try to Google, find some wine bloggers, find some food bloggers. And I realized I did not want to write about food. <laughs> like, really? What? Why? Why not? I love food. I mm -hmm. love I think it's engaging. Oh, I know. I, in my mind, didn't think I had the muscle, but I knew I could talk about wine. I knew Got I could it. write about it. I knew I loved pairings, but I didn't mm -hmm. want to write about food. And I love chefs and I love restaurants and people that work in restaurants. I yeah. just was like, no, I don't want to write about it. I want to do wine. And I re remember when I was like, okay, I'm going to take my name. I talked to a branding person. I reached out to a lady who did That's brand. Great. Yeah. And she told me to get my name, buy my domain, just do all this stuff. And she was like, but you'll need to take the beauty blog down because if people Google you, the right. beauty blog will come up first. Mm. That was kind of a hard decision. I was like, I've been blogging yeah. for years, but I didn't have the same love of product. Huh. It, did that fade over time? Or did you kind of think like start to run out of things to write about? Or did I you never just ran out of things to write about? It right. was for the, my idea of beauty was like, what's in the skincare ingredients? Mm. Like, fragrance. who are these noses that create this insane per perfume that people want? Right. But also the rise of the Kardashians. Uh. And I remember thinking every brand wanted me to write about a contour kit. Mm -hmm. And when that's your bread and butter, I kept going, I don't do all that to me. <laughs> I just don't. I love it. And I think it's fun, but I personally can't. Engage. Right. If you're not using it, then that kind of feels inauthentic, right? Yeah. And so I was like, and I'm more of like, I was like the J-Lo version of beauty. I wanted to be glowy and bronzy mm. and beachy. And it was like, no, let's put some crazy thing. And I was like, <laughs> so I thought it over. And I remember mm. sending a mass email to every public relations company I worked with. Told wow. them I was taking the beauty blog down, relaunching and moving into hospitality, particularly rhyme writing. I went and took a course. I took various courses on telling stories, on reporting, because it's mm. a different muscle. It's right. Same, but it was very different. And that's when I just said, okay, you know a lot about wine, but do you know the technical part? Because right, you right. don't explain the technical part, but you have to know it. Right. And when I really delved in wine studies to get certified because of that. Got it. So what it's wine and spirits. Uh, sorry, you have to remind me it's WSET is the acronym, the Wine and Spirits Education Trust, right? Yes. Got it. So that's who certifies wine professionals like what was the testing process like because I know there are three different levels right well it's different for, so why I always say wine and spirit education and trust or we call it w set is mm -hmm. more if you I look at it as like education writing you know maybe you don't want to work in a restaurant right right if you're doing quartermaster sommelier is the one you see in the restaurant that has to do you can do one in level one and you could get certified level two but to move to the next level you have to work in service you have Got to it. 
So for me, the W set gave me the same kind of education, more of like, if I wanted to teach it, if I wanted to concentrate on a region, it gave me the, that. And so there's so many levels, like there's the master some, and then there's the master. Right. And they're just, they're just one is more restaurant and the other isn't. That's it. Mm, okay. Got it. Interesting. So you're studying now for level three, right? I took my test. I'm waiting on my results. Oh, okay. We'll be crossing your fingers for you. That's so nerve wracking. Yeah. So what does a level three certification uh, say differently than the level two? Like how, how it gives you a little more street cred because there is a vast jump between two and three. Oh, okay. Got it. Of information in two. I just skipped one. So let's start there. I skipped one because I was like, I know that. I, yes. I, I was like, I can level three. Amazing. I'm so glad it was online. You have to blind taste two wines. Wow. Yeah. You have to blind how taste. How was that administered during COVID online? So the, 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 everything's online. You, every Tuesday night, it was three hours mm -hmm. and they would give you these mini samples. Did they mail them to you? Huh? No, you pick them up at Capital Wine School. You open your trunk. They put it in the trunk. They shut your trunk and you left. Oh my gosh. That is so <laughs> right? funny. So during the test, you had like this panel. It was only three people in the room. Uh -huh. Everything cornered off. You had your own table. Oh, they okay. put everything down and you wow. brought your own glasses. Wow. Yeah, you brought your own glass, you took it away, your own pens, your own napkin, everything you brought yourself. Hand wow. sanitizer. They had hand sanitizer for you, but everything was kind of covered. Mm. You want to think about it in that kind of terms. Yeah. But you have to blind taste, and you get 30 minutes to blind taste a red and a white. Oh my gosh. So how does it, so how do you feel right now? When I left, I was like, oh my God, I never want to take this again. <laughs> Part, and you have to write essays and I had just sliced open my thumb the day oh of the test like an hour before I was to leave so I was holding my pen like in some weird way oh my gosh I don't want to take the test again I don't care if it's distinction I don't care if it's merit I just want to pass yes okay well we'll be crossing our fingers for you I'm sure it's <laughs> yeah I'm sure that you did really well knowing you and how, how you how thorough you are um that's so exciting though congrats thank you yeah so that's that's how you you know you get certified and also mm -hmm. those effects those certifications do affect your salary. Yeah. You demand a higher rate when you say you have the level, you know, it people, mm -hmm. it really is like, it's like credentials is, you know, you get it like if you're a project manager, you get certified with that. This is what this does. Got it. Okay. Well, that's exciting. I mean, I, th I think that's definitely so challenging though. And was it daunting for you to kind of look at all of these different tests that you had to take and how did you kind of approach, approach that process? I approached it like, just like college for me. Right, just, right. Get the book, study mm -hmm. a little bit every day mm -hmm. because they're like five and six weeks, right? Like mm -hmm. I set aside time to like study, you know, go back, high, you know, highlight which pens work on the pages and, and make notes and flashcards and just different things. I treated it like school. Right. But the difference that happened with three is three happened at the same time this new civil rights movement just happened. Yes. So, it, and then I started a new company at the same time. So it was bad. T it was a bad time. It was just not great. It's like when it rains, it pours. Yeah. But June is a blur. Yeah. June in the entire month for me was a, is a blur. Yeah. I was, I, that's perfect. I actually wanted to ask you next. Um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about your new initiative, Black Wine Professionals. Um, I know that's something that you've been probably dedicating a lot of time and energy to and wanted to give you some time to kind of talk about that. The crazy thing of it is, this is when you go like, you never know where a career is going to take you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, from 2000, from March of 2018 until March of 2020, I was on a plane every month. Yeah. Traveling, international. Traveling, you had your whole beauty regimen on the plane that you've told me about. <laughs> we'll get into that another time. And a lot of times I would go in these regions and a mm -hmm. lot of people would go, we don't really know any black wine professionals. And I remember just hearing them say that and I'm thinking, how do you not know what I do? You know? Yeah, yeah. And when everything happened in June with the death of George Floyd and, and the whole Blackout Tuesday, I just, I really was just so hurt that a lot of wineries and people I knew never didn't speak up. Yeah. That he was like, it was very personal. Right. Because it was, it was emails going, we, we're, we're here for you, but it wasn't something public. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some did, some didn't, and you know, that's fine, and I can go on, but I kept right. thinking, if I'm going to change this landscape of how people see wine professionals who are Black, mm -hmm. we have to create something. So yeah. I fleet 
after I did this Instagram live and I wake up at like four in the morning and I was like, I'm gonna create a black wine professional site. So I'm gonna separate influencers from professionals. There's gonna be a criteria. And I was like, well, let me just see if the domain's there. The domain was there. Wow. Then I was like, let me just see if the Instagram is there. The Instagram is there. So I'm like five in the morning buying a domain. Oh my gosh. And I was like, let me create a logo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me just tag some people on this post, right, about black wine professionals. I think that post now has like 1,400 comments. Of wow. Tagging people. And I was like, oh, and then I got a call. People were like, this is a business, right? And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, it is a business. So I need to like build a website. Like <laughs> so everything was kind of like. This happened overnight, it sounds like. It kept, and then people were writing stories. It was like, so when is it launching? And I had to give it a launch date. So wow. I gave it a launch date of June 30th. And then I get an email from the New York Times and they're like, well, we're doing the story June 29th. So the website needs to be live a day early. So, oh my gosh. Well, when the Times calls, then you have to just. And I mean, I hand put every single person in that list. I did all the Instagram. Like I was wow. like delirious for days. And then I got an advisor who was like, okay, I'll handle the funding and just people like in that's how it happened and came together wow. where like I talked to somebody who's handling education so we're having classes for people and the classes will not only be for professionals but people want to move into the wine profession yeah oh wow so, that's amazing well, yeah we're going to do classes mm -hmm. and everything to tell you know to teach people who really can't like if you can't do a w set just yet but you want to learn from a professional so all the classes will be taught by someone on the black wine professionals list Wow. Okay. And it's not just winemakers. Just to Oh, no. It's not even right. winemakers. Right. It's okay. everybody pretty much in the industry besides winemakers and wine brands. Okay. If you work yeah. at a wine winery as the accountant, you're on there. If Got you work it. marketing, because I don't think a lot of people realize the jobs that are in wine yeah. outside of being a winemaker or song. This right. is where they can see these categories like, oh, it's a lot to, it's a lot of categories. You know, you can be a podcaster. Yeah. You go, a YouTuber that talks about what, so it's right. all those things that are in the, in those categories. In like one cohesive space, that's one amazing. Database. That's amazing. That's so exciting. I'm so excited for you. That's what I was, you know, kind of hoping we, well, you know, primarily would talk about, you know, your transition from, you know, being in the legal sphere to wine, but it sounds like there's a whole nother leg of your journey that's just it's ahead so of you. It's exciting. Sphere, then there's wine journalism, right? And so I'm a wine journalist who writes for yeah. publications. I'm a contributing editor for Vine Pair, which means I get a monthly column, but I also edit new writers who want to come in and write. Yeah. And then, wow. yeah, and then I'm still, I still have a blog, which I, is mine and I get to say what I want. And I speak about the intersection of racism in the wine industry. And I mm -hmm. talk about, you know, I'm proposing a new way of wine language, right? You read, like when you read a tasting note, you've seen tasting notes, you're like, what does this say? I don't know half yeah half of what this means <laughs> I would I just still remember during my time at the wine shop with you I would I would walk over I'm like okay uh does what I'm trying to say make any sense you know because we would go through different tastings and you would say well you know you have to look for this note or you know this is why this tastes the way it does it's because it's grown in this way from this region and um yeah exactly the tasting notes I think it's really make sense. Cause remember I used to always go this will go with Chipotle this will yeah. go with your pizza right and I think <laughs> is letting people know wine is fun yeah. and we don't have to always necessarily go so high end and it's great i love high end yeah. right i love all the mother sauces of france right bechamel right. all that pure blanc that's great but also what are you having if you having chipotle <laughs> what are you having if you having like wings like it's like, I mean, exactly and that's like the day-to-day -day, you know kind of pairing that people are looking for exactly so for me wine is just fun in that way mm -hmm. and what Wine is also technical, right? right. Chardonnay is Chardonnay. It's good. We got to understand climate, but we can say, hey, I like that Chardonnay that happens to be a champagne when I'm having French fries or potato chips. <laughs> so useful. Um, something I did want to ask you, you know, as a young professional myself and, um, you know, company happy hours used to be a thing. If they ever are a thing again in person, what are some basic wine uh you know, topics that I should be aware of, or, you know, what are some basics about wine that myself and other young professionals should be aware of? So I will say 
just don't go in acting like you know because I think sometimes people right. do it's like a catch right right and ask like what do you think why well, I this is my favorite line I am still trying to understand my palate I'm on a wine journey oh I <laughs> love that <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect right because and, and you could say oh I'm just really trying to learn I don't really know I'm just trying to just get a better understanding into instead of going well I know about this and maybe what you drink in college is not what you drink at the profession. <laughs> Because the wine is better, maybe, hopefully. Exactly, yeah. You gotta say something you don't know because then it becomes, I think so, like now wine is like very judgy. I think mm. judge people on what they're drinking instead of like helping to, them to learn. And so for me, it's just like, oh, well, you know, I'm learning to like, I'm on a wine journey. I'm still not there yet. I'm still don't, and be honest, like I'm not yeah. trusting myself, but I'm really trying. So for me, I'm just, you know, drinking this glass. Hopefully it will go well with my food. Yeah. I you love know. that. That's great. Because it's so honest and authentic too, you know? Yeah. Because guess what? Wine geeks really try to trip people up if they, because you yeah. have a lot of people in the work area who love wine and they try to trip people up who don't know, which mm -hmm. I think is but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, don't try to be a person that think, says you know something if actually you don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's completely fair. Appreciate that. It's kind of like what you talk about sports the same way if you didn't know it. No, and I can't really talk about sports either. So. I mean, don't say, oh, yeah, the, the grapes have those morning dew and like, just leave all that alone. Just like, People can see right through that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I think, honestly, it'd be helpful if anyone does want to learn more about wine. They can always follow you on Instagram, follow Black Wine Professionals, right? You have, does Black Wine Professionals have an Instagram, too? Yeah, it's, it's Black Wine Professionals. I am Julia Coney on all social pretty much. Um, right. you ever, like people email me all the time. It's a contact form. Just email me, you know, I talk, you know me, I talk to anybody. You do, you do. And you're so good at it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciated, you know, you're learning more about your background and your career. Okay. I'm going to say something to you. Yeah. Um, and I just discovered this website, had never heard of it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say is like, let's get paid or women get paid by Claire Wasserman. Okay. I am going to say this to all the young women who are going to listen to this podcast. Always ask for more money. <laughs>